So for me, one of the most important reasons to learn how to program is because you get these horrible jobs that you really don't want to do. And it's so helpful if you can learn how to program it so you never have to do it again. So this is an example of a job that I had one time and it was so awful. Okay. So there would be like this Excel file that had all of the data of whatever was going on, whatever it was we were fixing. And so um, there'd be like, oh, okay, so here's a tracking number. Here's whatever. I don't know why it's part numbers and antenna. It's not really a number, but that's okay because it doesn't matter. And then so what they would do is they would put sentences on it to be like, okay, so the first thing that happened when this antenna went bad is Titus composed a haiku in its honor. And then Riku awkwardly stared at it, and then Lulu set it on fire, and then Waka tried turning it off and turning it back on again, and then Waka stared at it some more, and now Titus is berating it. Okay, so my job was to go read these and then say something like responsible person, Titus. All right, then I had to go read the next one, and I had to find the last name that was written there, and then be like, Aron, all right? And then I had to find the last name written, and it'd be Lulu. And there were literally like 15,000 of these, or at least 1,500. And there was like over 1,000. And it was terrible because on top of this, by the time I got it done, of course, all the places or parts had moved. So the idea was I would find a responsible person, and then I would sort, and then I would send out the emails of like, hey, you have all these parts, and you know, you should turn them back in sometime. And yeah, it was a super amazing job. And I'm like, this is totally why, you know, I went to college and learned stuff. Um, so I could do this. Actually, the reason I learned how to you know, like do stuff in college was so I never had to do stuff like this again. So immediately I said, there's got to be a better way to do this. And it was amazing. So if you want to play along, I'll post the, um, I made this up in MATLAB, um, the little thingies to do this. So if you want to play home, you can run it in MATLAB or find a similar kind of thing. You just kind of make it up on your own. But um, I want to show you guys how to kind of use Excel macros to do this so that you don't have to do it by hand because if you're doing this 40 hours a week, you can't do anything cool. Um, or even better, you could do this for five minutes and then pretend you're doing it 40 hours a week, which is, I guess, unethical. So I guess, I don't know. You could just find a better job, I guess, maybe is the point. But, you know, I still want to get my job done. So we're going to talk about how to do this. So first of all, assuming you have some kind of file like this, what you would want to do is you want to save this as a macro-enabled workbook. So you're going to go to Save As, and I don't care where you save it. And um, you'll save it on the desktop as um, whatever this is called. There's going to be a macro enabled workbook. All right, so I'm saving it as macro enabled workbook lab six because that's just what I'm calling it. And there you go. The next thing that you're going to do is you want to make sure you can see a developer tab up here. If you can't see the developer tab, you need to go to options and um, there should be something here, the customized ribbon developer. So developer might be off and you can just turn the developer tool back on and then you'll be good to go to get started at least. So just so you're aware, now that you have a macro enabled workbook, whenever you open it, kind of like if you open something off the internet, it's like you open something off the internet. Are you sure you trust it? Um, you just need to say yes. I can't show it to you because unfortunately I've already told Excel that I trust myself. So if I open up my own macro, it's not going to warn me. But if something's not working, check for like a little yellow box that appears like around here somewhere and then just make sure that you enable macros. Okay. So what a macro is, is it's basically a um, recording of things that you click on. But what we're going to use is we're going to start with the recordings and then we're going to use the recordings to actually build from there and do more stuff in Visual Basic, which is the programming language ish thing that is in um, Excel. So um, over here, down in the bottom left corner, you're going to say no macros are currently recording. Click to begin a new macro. So um, I'm going to click this button. Um, actually in a minute, but I want to show you a quick um, tip trick that you can use in Excel. You can hit control button and then the down and it'll go all the way to the bottom. Okay. And that just seems like a dumb thing to do, um, but I'm going to show you again. So I can do control up and then control right and control down and then control left and then control down and then control right. And so basically it's just going from um, each side going around. So um, now that you know that we're going to go ahead and start recording our macro. So I'm going to click this button down here and it doesn't matter what I call it. I can call it stuff and um, it is now recording. So if you look in the bottom, it says ready, which means it's recording. And then this would be the stop button. So all I want to do is I want to record what the computer does whenever I hit control down, because that'll tell me what my last element is. 
That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to stop the macro. Okay. So you've actually done something. It doesn't look like it. Um, but go ahead and save just so you feel good about what's going on. All right. Now I want you to hit Alt F11. Awesome. Okay. So Alt F11 gives you to this weird screen you've probably never seen before unless you've done stuff in Visual Basic. And on the left, you'll see where it says modules. You can double click that, open up module one. Now you see stuff, macro, and this. So what's really cool is if you've ever programmed before, so I do a lot of my stuff in MATLAB, but if you ever programmed in MATLAB and you've never programmed in Visual Basic, you'll still see stuff. So it's like, if you speak Spanish, you can kind of sort of understand Italian because they're like 76% lexicographically related or something like that. Um, and that's the same thing with programming languages. So even though maybe I've never programmed in Visual Basic, I can see, well, this is probably a comment. So um, instead of like in MATLAB, we do this as a percent sign as a comment. Um, in Visual Basic, they're going to use little apostrophe. So that's kind of cool. Um, so a little bit about macros in Excel. Um, this looks like an X1, but it's actually an Excel. So if you're ever typing something like just I don't do a ton of typing, um, but if you do some typing, instead of typing X1, make sure you're typing X lowercase L down. So basically what happened is, is it recorded us um, going down with the, the thing. So this is the, this is the command to do exactly what we did. Um, I'm going to do something unique in Excel here. I'm going to type something called option explicit. And what option explicit does is it forces us to declare our variables um, before we can use them. So again, in MATLAB, I could just say x equals 5, and it'll be like, cool, x equals 5. Um, but MATLAB also has some nice things. So if I misspell x, um, you know, then, I don't know how I spell x, but you know what I mean? If I misspell x, then it's going to be like, hey, undefined variable x, what's going on? Um, Visual Basic isn't as nice about that, or maybe it is, and I just don't understand what it's doing. But one of the things I do to protect myself in Visual Basic is I set myself up to where I'm only using variables that I declare in advance. So if I wanted to declare like, um, like I don't know, a, a, a string, I could say I'm gonna dimension um, a name as string. And um, if you start typing ST, um, R even, if you like that and you're ready to go and you like the string, you can just hit tab and it'll go and hit enter. You can look, so you can tell that this is kind of like a programming language for business majors because it's amazing and it auto corrects and it auto formats and all that kind of stuff. If you can't tell, this is blue. So it's a blue capital dim name as string. And so now if I wanted to say name is equal to buggy, now I can have that name as buggy. All right. So um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just see, okay, well, what is it actually giving me um, for this um, down select? So um, I guess I can just put this in a message box and it'll just tell me that information right there. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and save if you want, but I'm going to play this um, form. So what it's going to do is wherever the current cursor is, and I can kind of move it back up here, wherever the current cursor is, it's going to do that down thing and tell me where it is. So I'm going to hit play. True. Oh, thanks. That's exactly what I wanted. Perfect. All right. So that didn't give me what I wanted. Um, so really what I have to do is I kind of got to play around. And um, the way that you learn how to code in Visual Basic is really the way you learn how to code in anything. You've got to kind of play around and mess around with it. So what I can do eventually is I'll find that I can actually ask for the active cell. I can't spell. Um, active cell. So to make that pop up, just so you know what I was doing, I started typing. I think you go away. Active. And then I started typing that and I said control space. And it popped up with this. So I'm going to go active cell dot R O W and um, then it'll pop up. Now, again, I can't use last row until I dimensionalize it. Yes, um, integer. There we go. And so now I'm going to message box last. And now that I have it dimensioned, I can control space again and it'll fill it out for me. All right. So I'm going to hit play, true, oh, and it overflowed. Now the reason it overflowed is because I was already, I'm going to control up, um, 
I was already down here, so whenever I controlled down, it actually took me to the end of the spreadsheet. So actually what I need to do is I wanna make sure that every time I control down, I'm actually in cell A1. So the way to do that is to come in here and say range um, A1 select. So now you'll see whenever I run this, I'll go like run and it'll go there and it'll say true and then I'll say that 46. And it's at the bottom right now. So if I actually hit that control, whatever, it'll take me all the way to the bottom, control down. But whenever I run it again, it's gonna say, oh, back to that specific cell because it started, it forces it to start at 81. All right, so now I'm getting ready to, to go on. So I'm gonna delete some of the stuff that I just made up for fun of these. Um, I'm gonna delete, delete the message box, but don't actually delete the selected end thing. So um, again, it should look like this. And again, remembering that this is an XL, not an X1. All right, so um, essentially what I want to do is starting here at C2, I wanna know what this text is, and I wanna compare the text all the way down and find names in them. So if I wanna do the same thing a specific number of times, something in your brain should be shouting for loop, for loop, for loop, for loop. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing is looking for a, um, put together a for loop. But before I do that, I'm just gonna see if I can get the um, code working for just a very simple example. So I'm just gonna work on getting the code working for C2. All right, so I'm going to create a new variable called my text as str. And remember, you can hit tab to finish that off, or you can just type it out. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to say my text. And again, you're not going to know this off the top of your head. If you've never programmed in Excel before, this all takes like hours and hours and hours of Googling and trying to figure this out. But I'm going to go to range C2, and I'm going to ask for the text. And again, I'm going to put it in a message box. And again, I control spaced that to make that come up. So I'm gonna run this and it should tell me what's going on. So here I'm at cell 46 and I say, okay. And now here is the text that is in cell C2. Interestingly enough, notice that the focus of the cell doesn't actually go to C2. It's just telling me what it is without looking at it, which is kind of weird. All right, but I can delete this now because I know that that's working. So basically every time you know something's working on a message box, you can go ahead and delete it. So, um, now what I want to do is I want to see if I can find the, um, the different names in the cells. Now, um, the funny thing is, is the way to do this is um, there's a couple of different functions. One is in string. So let's actually go look at it. All right. So here I have the in string function for VBA. And it's got information on it, and basically you can tell what it does. Um, it returns a numeric value, um, and it gives you the position. Hold on, it tells you this somewhere. Oh, it's right there. So what you do is you give it the string that you're searching within. That's the first one. The ones that are in brackets are optional, and the square brackets are optional. Um, so this is what you're searching within. So this would be my text. And then the substring you want to find, that would be the name, like Titus or Riku or something like that. Um, and what it's going to return is it's going to return the numeric value, um, which tells you the position, like the, the, the position that it shows up in. So um, like in this example, it says if I ask for tech on the net, now it's not starting until the 10th one, it's looking for a lowercase t, it's gonna come back with the 15, which is the position for, um, it's gonna give you the position basically. Um, tech on the net t, it's gonna give you a 15. So it's telling you the, the place that it appears. So there's um, this function called in string. So it tells you the first place it appears, which actually does the opposite of helping us because I don't want the first place that it appears, I actually want the last place that it appears. However, we're super lucky, and if we can find it, it's over here on the right. Um, this website's actually kind of helpful because we have in string, and then really related to it is in string reverse. So this is going to tell us the position of the word, or the, the last position, basically, of the word um, in the string. So if I was going to look, if I'm looking for my search string, Titus, I can say this thing, I don't know, whatever. So the position is gonna be in string reverse, and I'm making mistakes on purpose in case you're freaking out. Um, in string reverse, I'm gonna look within my text 
for search string and see what it gives me. Oh, I can't use position. Do you see how it capitalized position whenever I moved away from it? So see, it says lowercase position and I moved. That means that somewhere in Visual Basic for applications, it's thinking, hey, position is actually something. So I'm gonna call it my string position or my name position or something like that. I just have to call it something besides position and now it doesn't get upset. Now it is gonna get upset with me if I actually try to run this because the variable is not defined. Remember, I use this option explicit, which means I cannot use any variable without um, declaring it first. So I'm gonna do dim search string, but I'm gonna misspell string on purpose so you can see what happens when I do that as well. Um, and then I'm gonna dim name position as an integer. So um, now I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna run it again. Now see, it still says the variable is not defined. So if you keep getting this variable not defined, you're like, no, 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 I know I defined it for sure. Um, that's because you probably misspelled it. So now if I fix the spelling, it'll run. Oh, now this variable is not defined. And that's because I misspelled text, my text. And notice whenever I moved away, um, it capitalized that T. So it's taking care of that for me. So this is, like I said, it's a super snuggly programming language. All right. So, oh, come on now, debug. What are you gonna find? You can't find me? I'm dumb. I call this interior, it's clearly supposed to be integer. All right, now hopefully it'll work. Let's try this again. And all right, I have no idea if it worked because I forgot to use a message box. So I'm gonna do message box for the name position. And now I'm gonna try running it one more time and it's gonna give me a 258. Okay, so now here's the thing is, I have to not just check for Titus, I also need to check for Riku. So I'm gonna remember Titus was 258. Um, other names that I would be looking for might be, who else is, is in there? And I know Titus is the answer, but let's look at, um, say, Waka. And I'm gonna run this. And it's gonna say walk is 192. So um, how would I know which one is actually the most the, the most recent one? How do I know who has it? The way that I know who has it is um, whoever has it is going to have the highest number, right? So whoever has the highest number for the position is the person who actually has it. Now this doesn't help if people misspell their own names, which happened to me all the time at work. So it'd be like, oh, you don't actually have it. And I'm like, well, that's because you can't spell your name and uh, blah, 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 blah. Or somebody else can't spell their name. So, I mean, this is not a foolproof problem, but maybe if you've got a nice little thing where people are using a drop down box to assign themselves stuff, maybe you're better off. Or maybe you're not keeping track of stuff like this in Excel to begin with. So anyway, all right, so I'm kind of getting this working, except right now I'm having to go in and, um, and put in all these names separately, which again, kind of defeats the purpose of writing code. So um, this is just kind of an introduction to what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna go kind of go nuts with it in the next video.